Oh, that's a brutal question. The most overrated bird is the European starling. Now, a lot of people look at them and they think, oh, they're so pretty, they're glossy and iridescent and shiny. Not a fan. Um, they're an invasive species, um, hurting our native species. Don't belong here. Not all that pretty. Most underrated, I'm gonna go with the morning dove. They're not spectacularly colored, but when you really take the time to notice them, they're like, like they're made out of satin and all these delicate shades of beige and browns and a hint of blue on the crown and the back of the neck. Mourning here is mourning as in sadness for the dead, M-O-U-R. An ing, um, and that's because of the sound they make. That, and a lot of people hear it and they think, "Oh, what's that owl? I'm hearing an owl in the daytime," but they're actually hearing a morning dove. But the other reason why I think it's so underrated is because it's everywhere. I mean, this bird thrives in the middle of Manhattan. It thrives in the deep woods uh, north of here in the Hudson Valley. It thrives in the deserts of California. It finds a way to survive everywhere, it seems, and, and I find that spectacular and fascinating. Bird with the most attitude, hummingbirds. They just, they don't take crap from anybody. <laughs> you walk into their territory and they're like, who are you? Why are you here? I had a, um, a hummingbird feeder, and I had to change the hummingbird feeder, you know, with the with the liquid in it for the hummingbirds. So I took the hummingbird uh, bird feeder down. I started to walk away with it, and the hummingbird, as I'm walking away, is flying over and eating from the feeder because he's like, "No, no, I'm not done yet. I'm I've still got more eating to do." So I'm like, "Okay, waiting for you, waiting for you." And then the best hummingbird story ever. I was in Palm Springs. I was sitting in the courtyard, and so I was spending hours in front of my computer, uh, not, not moving. And all of a sudden I feel this kind of tingling electric feeling going up and down my leg. And I'm like, what the heck is that? I looked down, there was a female Costa's hummingbird running its bill up and down my leg as it flew along my leg. The only theory I can come up with is that it was the nesting season. She decided to check out my leg hair as potential nesting material to build her nest with. It was the most awesome thing. It was the best ever. I was just enthralled. I think she was like, oh, this soft downy stuff is, it would be great for building my nest. Thank goodness I don't shave my legs. Oh, most mysterious bird. Nighthawks. Uh, they strike me as very mysterious because they, they're so easy to overlook in the daytime. Um, and yet at night they're flying around on these, you know, big flapping wings, um, almost like a ghostly presence. Least bird-like bird. I mean, I got to go with penguins. You know, they're kind of waddling along, <laughs> making their way down to the ocean and then flopping, throwing themselves in and they don't fly. They, they look like they're wearing tuxedos and they spend most of their time in the ocean. You know, they've adapted their, their wings into flippers and their feet into paddles. And that's where, they, that's where they thrive, is in an aquatic underwater environment. A nemesis bird is a bird you really, really, really want to see, and you've come really, really close to seeing it a couple of times, but you haven't seen it yet. And it's almost like the bird is going, nyan, 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 you can't see me. But the Jer falcon um, is the largest falcon on the planet. And it can uh, take down gulls, it can take down ducks, you know, really big birds but I've never seen one. Uh, they are restricted to really, really northern places like subarctic regions. I hate cold weather. I hate it, hate it, hate it. So it's hard to get me out there birding in those places. I've just never made a trip up there to find one. Though I have been to Iceland twice, still haven't seen a gyr falcon, and they're certainly in Iceland, so that's incredibly annoying. I've seen captive gyr falcons. I've seen falconers birds, um, but I've never seen one in the wild, and that's what counts. Well, the good thing is that birds are everywhere. Whether you have binoculars or not, you've got to start tuning into the birds. 
and try to figure out what you're seeing. And once you start tuning into it, then you're going to really want to know more. Just uh, keep your ears and your eyes open.